Hey, this is the Amateur Logician from AmateurLogician.com. As you may know, I'm doing a series on the philosophy of Rene Descartes, and I want to point out some major references that I'm using for my latest video. And I want to, at least presently, focus in on matter and mathematics, an essentialist account of laws of nature by Father Andrew Yonan, which I highly, highly recommend. Nobel laureate Eugen Weiner famously wrote on the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in the natural sciences. That is, how is it even possible that mathematics can so very accurately describe the things in the world around us? And that question is one of the main questions explored in this really, really good book, which I definitely recommend checking out. Unfortunately, it's very expensive if you buy new, but sometimes you have to spend some money if you want a really, really good and interesting book. But also, what does it even mean for something to be a law of nature? That's explored in this very textbook. And I'm going to talk about some of the central themes in this book. And I do talk about the central themes in this book in my latest video on Rene Descartes. Now, let's take a look at the table of contents. So you will see, almost from the very beginning, so you have the introduction, but then chapter 1... It gets right into Descartes, modern science, and scholasticism. So you have Descartes' method versus the scholastic abstraction approach when it comes to mathematics. Body is extension alone, which is Descartes' view, versus body is matter and form. Laws of nature and occasionalism versus a creator god of active substances. But beyond just thinking about Descartes, it gets into, for example, David Hume, with the problem of induction, or David Hume's skeptical view even of the nature of cause and effect, so to speak. Chapter 3 is really, really interesting on quantum mechanics. And if you go back, you will see that some of the pioneers, like Heisenberg, thought, hey, Aristotle's ontology, his metaphysics of actuality and potentiality, that really well describes quantum mechanics, that a real feature of reality not only is what is, so to speak, in act or actuality, but what is in potency or potentiality. Potentiality is a real aspect of reality. And a lot of contemporary work is going on right now in metaphysics and ontology, thinking about quantum mechanics and saying, hey, a lot of Aristotle's ideas, ideas from Thomas Aquinas, ideas from the scholastic tradition, applies and best explains quantum mechanics. This is a very interesting chapter. We have a chapter on mathematical abstraction, necessity and teleology, a defense of final causality, and defining the laws of nature. Now, one of the things that you will see in this book is that the author argues that mathematical ideas apply to the physical world so well because we learn them from the physical world in the first place. So it's not miraculous in that sense. But René Descartes held the view that mathematical knowledge is innate, right? That's, just, that's not to say that it doesn't take hard work to figure things out, but it is innate nevertheless. And because of that, Descartes didn't talk about or think about abstraction or any sense knowledge. That's not primary as the source of scientific knowledge for Descartes. But if Descartes is right, then the ability of mathematics to so readily describe the world around us is indeed miraculous. On the other hand, conversely, if the Aristotelian scholastic tradition, which continues to this day, is right, then it is not miraculous in this sense at all because we learn math from experience. While math is a priori knowledge in the scholastic viewpoint, in a middle sense, as this author explains, it doesn't need empirical verification once it is learned from experience in the first place. So we do need some experience to acquire some mathematical knowledge, but we can build up from there, so to speak. Okay. So a lot is explored in this book. And when it comes to reading philosophy, I think it's really, really important to actively engage with the arguments. And it's not just a mere intellectual chess game. Actually, it's not. You shouldn't look at philosophy that way. In my mind, it should always be to try to pursue what is true, good, and be beautiful. Okay. But doing that takes hard work, and trying to understand the arguments 
is a difficult task. And when I read a philosophy book, oftentimes I will mark it up, I will highlight things, I will circle things, I will write notes. And it's very vital to use logic when studying these arguments because you have to identify what is an argument. What's the conclusion? What are the premises used to justify the conclusion? Is the argument valid? That is to say, does the conclusion follow from the premises? And is the argument sound? Do we have a valid argument with true premises? So I think this is a really interesting book, and I explore some of it in my latest video on Rene Descartes. So please check it out if you are so inclined. I think the philosophy of math is a cool topic to explore, and this really has a unique, interesting approach that you might not find in other books on the philosophy of mathematics. But this book is much more than the philosophy of math. It gets into the philosophy of nature. It will get into causality and induction. So to talk about modern contemporary quantum mechanics viewed through the lens of traditional ontology and metaphysics. Now, I am the Amateur Logician from AmateurLogician.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy uh, my series on René Descartes. The latest video is quite long, I admit, but I cover a lot of topics. A lot come from this very book, but also from Etienne Gelson's book, Methodological Realism, which maybe I'll do another video on, and also with a really excellent book by Edward Fazer, Aristotle's Revenge, The Metaphysical Foundations of Physical and Biological Science. As you can see, I really beat this book up, so I definitely have studied uh, much of it. And it's a really interesting book to explore. And here is, of course, um, Discourse on Method and Meditations on First Philosophy. And like I said, when studying philosophy, try to actively engage with the arguments, think about counter-arguments, Take notes, highlight, circle, underline. That's how you get good in philosophy. Anyways, thanks for watching. I appreciate you, and I'll see you soon. Be well.